Oh, Ron's here, an old friend. He, uh, Ron's a good friend Ron, of ours. Ron, wow. Ron, Tom, yeah. Tom. How you doing? It was his birthday the other day. Hello, hello. Kareem's there now. There's Kareem. Ron's here. Oh, I don't oh. know. Okay, there he is. Ron was on a little drive. Uh, he's climbing in. Hello, Kareem. How you doing, man? I see hey, you got man. the. I see you got the pipes behind you, man. You got the yeah. metric behind you. Bro. I was actually doing some work on like different PCs and stuff, but uh, now I'm here to have some fun. I listened to the conversation though, so. Cool, I man. Can... I, I know. I know you're a Jedi. I know you're you're operating behind the scenes. You're you're masterminding. You're uh, you're certainly the architect of. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, it sounds, I know that uh, your partner Chris worked with you, but you know you seem to be the. Uh, the emotional foundation of the uh, of this project. So uh, yeah, man, appreciate being with you. Yeah, here. no, and, uh, I appreciate really, you. Ready, um, cool, man. I guess I'm ready to share uh, a few insights if you guys want to. Yeah, yeah, that's, what, that's what you're here to do. Can cool. I try and find consciousness for you? Oh yeah, oh yeah, you, yeah man, you of course. Did. We forgot about we forgot about Kareem. Yeah, I gave, yeah, I gave I'm gonna steal it from Passio, but consciousness is. The ability to recognize patterns within you and without around you. So basically, yeah, sure. understanding exactly. what's going on within here. I remember, I remember exactly him saying that, dude. I can fucking see his. I can see. <laughs> I was, I was at that. I was at that presentation, dude. I was at the natural law presentation in Connecticut in 2013, dude. I met him there. I've met him three times. I met Mark Passio three times, dude. That guy is total wizard. And and I've met Larkin Rose once, and I've worked with him twice. I did. I did. Good anarchist, bad anarchist, with Mark and Rose twice. That's how I got anarchist with Jeff Berwick. And so now, you know, I know all these people and I work with them and I get up on stage. So, you know, we, we all can take a larger leadership role in the liberty movement and whatever you want to call it, man, the person, person development, the sustainability of autonomy and self-sufficiency that is what's important autonomy and self-sufficiency autonomy and self-sufficiency autonomy and self-sufficiency and really just i would recommend only having like more no more than three things you're working on that like don't spread yourself too thin you know it's just work on a few things that are increasing your autonomy or your self-sufficiency and there's everything good comes under the categories okay cool man so you were saying about consciousness and awareness go ahead so consciousness is uh that definition from passing i like it and what's awareness I would say awareness is that just an open question can be it can be defined in many ways like I'm aware now that I'm awake you know I'm awake but I think it goes to the point from just being conscious here to understanding that I'm not just me I'm part of a bigger thing or cool. it or whatever you Brahmin or sure you know, man all Buddha or what, Allah or whatever you want to call it cool all right great okay so uh now I will, um, you know, hit you guys with some, uh, with some, with some, with some, uh, some, some live on the fly um, you know, wisdom, you know, from from my travels and from uh, some of the synthesis I'll be writing about. I, I think I'm gonna start writing on Steemit. What do you guys think about Steemit? Is Steemit, Steemit worth? Well, the time and effort? I haven't really, I haven't really checked it out yet, but it it seems kind of greasy because. I don't know where the money comes from, and yeah. there's it's yeah, yeah, sure. it, there's it's something kind of question. fishy about it, it's eh? Always the first, it's always the first question to ask. Um, however, if you can write articles for free, and you can upvote articles for free, and people get money in that process, and there's there's uh, there's uh, you know anti-corruption, and there's free speech happening because of the blockchain. I don't know. I did have another I, a mentor of mine um, that said it's uh, you know it, he, he's not sure he wants to support it. So different people are having different things. I, it's also Patreon, which I heard recently for getting paid as a content creator. Oh, no, mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I think Steemit is good if you want to write good content. Keep in mind you're yeah. going to compete. So people, I know a lot of people that go on there. They're okay writers, or they just write content that's you know they're not super have, passionate. You have to have work. like a following already sometimes, you know, I think those people are doing better. Anyway, so, um, so if you listen, here, here's the, here's the thoughts, guys. So, um, I created, so, you know, I, I'm a big creator, okay? So, I've lived in, this is my fourth country to live in. I 
I've lived, I was born in the United States. Um, I'll be 40 in December. I know I look, you know, younger than most of you guys by a wide margin, you know, um, for a number of reasons, but, you know, I'm actually <laughs> older than you. So, you know, um, uh, I, I've, I've lived in France twice, I've lived in Australia twice. Um, I speak French fluently. Um, I made over five million on Wall Street before I was 32, you know, working uh, as a director at Merrill Lynch and Jeffries and doing FB derivatives trading, convertible bond trading, and just crushing it, you know, just doing whatever I wanted. So I just excelled in that whole status life, that whole like government life. Um, just school, work, dating, extracurriculars, um, you know, all achievement and, you know, uh, captain football team and all that stuff. And just going to, you know, it was like my time on Wall Street, especially with that bubble, was one of the last times where that old plan that they've been telling people of you can work for 40 years and for 40 hours a week and retire on 40% of what you're earning, like that's totally over now. But, um, you know, when I was there on Wall Street, certainly you could do this way better than those numbers in shorter time. Um, so I, I, I went to Rice University, my sister went to Duke, you know, she's a doctor, um, her husband's a surgeon, she just had a baby when I created my huge investment win to create my three week trip to travel over the U.S. Um, I, uh, I got just to be there for her baby being born and me becoming an uncle. So that was completely magical to be there for that experience. Um, and they're still up in the matrix, you know, and I'm helping people get out. So one big thing that if you guys take notes, write down is empathy and compassion. Empathy and compassion, empathy and compassion. Those are the two biggest words that when you integrate those into your life, then, um, you know, everything flows, flows faster. Like I was saying, I had a huge career on Wall Street. Um, that changed in 2010, 2011, and um, made all kinds of you know, choices around that time frame, mostly based in fear from things changing and, you know, not having access to all the stuff that I've become, grown accustomed to. That's when I started to really get into, like, Ron Paul and libertarianism and start learning about other things that led me to, like, Mark Passio and Larkin Rose and... Jeff Berwick and uh, Stefan Molyneux is someone that I followed early, but now I don't, I've, I've disowned, you know, so <laughs> uh, like, like, you know, other people that are just, you know, they just don't align with, you know, my learning process at the time. Although I still respect Molyneux's early work. Um, and then I really just got totally focused and passionate about um, the personal journey. Like, I, my, I used to test ENTP. Which of you guys know the Myers Briggs test? The Myers Briggs personality test. Anyone know that test? No. No. You guys never heard of that one? Okay, so really great website is. Uh, I've I've heard of it, but I don't know all the specifics on it. Oh, okay, cool, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a really great test. Uh, I recommend everyone do it. It only takes ten or twelve minutes. We literally could do it together at the end of the thing if you wanted to. I would be curious to. Uh, to see you know, how it tests now, and we we all would you know know more about we could do it together, and people could do it you know that are watching the thing. I don't care. Anyway, so um, uh, you know, I, I used to test ENTP, which is the debater, and um, I used to love debating people, but now I'm just all about solutions. You know, solutions is really the answer, guys. Um, debating and getting stuck in these you know uh, arguments and whatever that's just a waste of time, man. It's really a waste of time. It doesn't change anything, okay? This thing is just gonna keep going until it collapses. For reform, I don't think it's gonna be possible. There's no chance of reform. It's just gonna keep being this theft, theft, taxation is theft, you know, corruption process until it ends. But right now what we can do is we can work on bettering ourselves. We can work on the personal journey. We can work on creating better communities. We can work on creating passive income. We can work on getting stronger physically. We can work on raising our vibration. We can work on raising our consciousness. We can work on um, collaborating with better groups of people. We can become physically stronger. We can travel more. You know, I just went, I have Dutch residency, like a fucking boss that, that I worked, you know, my butt off to achieve. And I just went to the States for three weeks and had all amazing experiences. And that was deliberate living. So, you know, that's the goal now. And um, you know, I serve now in in two ways, and yeah, I'd love to 
you know, leave you guys with that start and have you ask some questions about what I just said. Hmm. For whoever has uh, some some follow up questions. Uh, okay, here's my question. You said you were you said you were living the life most people like dream of, like yeah. chilling on Wall Street. Yeah. The American quote unquote dream. Fucking bitches making money, just like in the song. Yeah, like yeah. like all the rappers say, so you got yeah. bling bling. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and most people would say, okay, Adam was highly successful. Yeah. In that regard, what made you have an awareness shift of, hmm, even though I have the lifestyle, I don't really want the lifestyle. I want to be free, because a lot of people right now. I feel if they were just doing. You feel like you, a lot of people now. You feel uh, you feel what? If they were just doing that, they'd be like, "Oh, I'm successful. My life is great." Or at least they think that for a while. Yeah, you know, I think the thing is that the reality is a lot of people are just are chasing money because that's what they, that's what they've been taught, you know, to do is to chase money. Um, and the reality is, chasing money, you know, only. Um, only works until something changes. Chasing money only works until something changes. Um, when you when you chase your passion, then the money will come eventually. Like uh, Dan was saying earlier, um, it's about the balance um, between um, creating enough stable, livable income to survive on while you're building your your dream. Okay, if you if you still need to work and you don't have a windfall of savings or a pension or whatever you know something that you can just live on and have some kind of maybe some some good passive income from um you know that's a whole huge shift and as you said so it really didn't happen for me um until i, I it was over you know like I, I i went through um six years ago what i believe you know most of americans are going to go through you know, in the next, you know, two to four years. I mean, you guys tell me, like, when, when do you guys think that um, the financial system collapsed or changes or chaos or whatever, like, would be visible to people? Like, like how many years? Like, you guys think? No, well, me pers me personally, I think that if you didn't get a good idea and feel of it from the great recession as they called it uh -huh. you know because it wasn't as bad as the depression but it still I mean I was affected by it I was I went through it and I'm now going through a second time go around uh, being let go somewhere not through my own doing um, and it's made me very more aware of that I really want to I want to be in control of what happens and what I say and what I do and even though I'm actively looking for work because I do need to have income coming in because I haven't built up my savings business the way well built up my business the way I want it to be cool. mm -hmm. yep. um, but in my mind even as I'm looking at jobs and stuff I'm thinking okay I don't want to you know I don't want to be tied in by them saying well you have to work this set schedule because I have things going on in my life that are really yeah. important to me and that are probably more important to me in some ways than so i'm i'm finding yeah. that being a real you know okay so come back conflict. that's it's really cool really cool insights thank you so how long do you think until like the the us slash global economy has until there's big problems hello there uh, i'll say a good couple years or so maybe two to five years Two to five years. Cool. Who's next? Um, what's your prediction on how long the U.S. economy has to, to teeter along until you know something's apparent? I give it like maybe eight more years at the most. Eight more years mm -hmm. at the most. That's being generous. I'd yeah, say. dude, I totally could see it, man. Look at Japan, dude. There's so many examples, man. It just, dude, they just keep they just keep pulling out a new distraction every three months, man. It doesn't matter, dude. It can go on forever, dude. Yeah, it's Eight, eight months is completely plausible. Who else has got a number? Kareem, you have a number? I have one. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Carl. Is it Carl Davis? Estimate. Estimating the way things are going now. Yeah. 
a year and a half, two years max. The economy is going to fall all apart. The dollar is going down already. Bitcoin's already, Bitcoin's already coming above the dollar. So, you know, it's not going to be long before the collapse will happen. Yeah, man. Well, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies just really has a long time left. I mean, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are like one two percent of gold and silver markets. Okay, the size of investable dollars in there. And the gold and silver markets are like one, two percent of the global debt markets. So, you know, we kind of put the gold on the line. And, sorry, we kind of put the gold on. We kind of put the gold on the line and printed it off in the bill. So the gold, the gold, the gold, the gold has been suppressed. Oh really? So the gold has been suppressed by central bank enabled. Um, fiat currency structured derivatives contracts that allow for re 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 are trying to escape at the same time. Those are small windows. One percent of one percent, right? Is point point you know point one percent. That's a small. That's a small window. That's a small. That's a small hole to fit a lot of, you know, a lot of people trying to get out. Get out. So it's going to be interesting. Well, but I think one and a half to two years is completely possible. Thank you. Uh, thank you, first mate, Carl Davis, 2017. Who else has a number? Leon, are you there with a the number? I see you moving, driving or something. I leave my man Leon, like the professional. You got you got Matilda over there, uh, shoot, shooting people with you or no? What you got? What you got Leon? He's driving right now. I don't think okay. he can fly. Okay. Yeah. Leon, Leon, we're gonna give you a pass. Yeah, I see the smile though, man. Cool. He's really okay. cool. He's a trucker and stuff. So yeah, <laughs> yeah I got a thumbs up, man. Awesome. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Yeah, no, cool. Mat no Matilda shooting people up. <laughs> By the way, dude, have you guys seen? Have you guys seen the 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 extended version of the professional? No. With uh, with 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 you know the Luke Besson movie. You guys know the professional Leon from 1994, New York City hitman. With you know you guys know the movie, right? Natalie Portman. Come on, guys. Have, somebody has to know the movie. No. No, I haven't seen it. I, I haven't seen it, but I know the what, the movie you're talking about. Okay, listen, it's a fantastic movie about consciousness. Okay, watch that movie. Okay, and about you know love and fear. Great movie. Anyway, and the 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 lead scenes are outrageous. Um, so you know, Kareem, to really get back to your question, my little bit of a taking tangents here, um, is that uh, the shift to letting go of materialism and focusing on service that. You know, that really came about through elevating my consciousness. You know, understanding consciousness, moving through the three levels of consciousness from animal consciousness to intellectual consciousness to spiritual consciousness. Those are the three different levels in one of the paradigms that I've, you know, love studied. Uh, maybe some of you guys have heard of a book called Power Versus Force. Anyone know that book, Power Versus Force by Dawkins? It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not Richard Dawkins. I don't think the God is dead guy. Different. The different Dawkins. But anyway, um, he has a scale from zero to eight hundred, and Christ and Buddha were like eight hundred. You know, just you know, consciousness and uh, influential ability and just love. You know, that is that a power verse force? He was talking about the different levels, and then he, he goes. Has, he has to a light. numerical numerical scale. He has a numerical scale. Yeah, I looked at that. My thing is. Yeah. Like I, I, I haven't finished. I haven't finished the book. I've been wanting. It's been on my list, but I've looked. I've seen. The, I've seen the numerical scale. Is that a film, Adam? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. It's a book, yeah. though, right? Power versus force. I'll yeah. have to read it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so, so yeah, man. So Kareem. So specifically, just to, to talk about the guidance. So 2012 was when um, after you know, Tony Robbins since 2004 and all different stuff over the years and you know 2009 was my best year when i became a millionaire and made over seven figures in one year after 10 years on wall street in connecticut and driving x5s and having two thousand three thousand dollar a month apartments and going on vacation in the hamptons and you know going to vegas and 
uh, Iceland four times and Tahiti and Fiji, just, you know, doing whatever the fuck I wanted. Um, you know, after all that stuff, I found the Avatar course. And that was when I really learned about aligning with other people. That's when I learned about um, 